What is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the new Pal World series that I will be doing and this is the pacifist run. Oh, it's going to be a tough one. It is going to be a tough one. So there are a couple of rules that we have in place for this and I am not sure how well it's going to go, but we're going to give it a shot. We're not allowed to use any Pal Spheres whatsoever. We're also not allowed to attack any of the Pals in the open world. So in order for that to happen, I have increased the experience rate as we won't be killing powers out in the wild we also won't be capturing them in the wild and the gather rate is also three times as well so i started getting some wood from a nearby tree and my plan was pretty much to beeline it straight to one of the strongholds that was going to be our only way to get one of these first powers obviously we could get an egg but we don't have an incubator to do anything with it so we pretty much wanted to head to the Lavender Fields where I knew there was a stronghold located down there. However, I made it to the Rain Syndicate Tower instead first and lo and behold, there was a stronghold up here. And what have we got? I can't remember the name of this one, but I do know it picks items up for us. Come on, we just need to get the power before we die. Let's go, got our first pal. All right, we got Floppy with Swift. That is, that is actually really good. We also got some wheat seeds as well, which is also really good. I will happily take those. I then went ahead and built a simple workbench so that I could get at least a pickaxe or a hatchet in order to fight these guys because I did not have any way to defend myself. So I made myself up a small pickaxe and then I headed out to a small settlement where the first lot of traders were, as well as the first dungeon. On our way up to another place, I found an egg and then we found an R6 locked in the cage. Make a little bit of money in the process, maybe enough to buy that Lambo. We're gonna free this R6 here. That's perfect, that is exactly what we wanted. Let's go, welcome to the team, mate. Oh, we got some horn and organ, flame organs from doing that. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh my God, my health. Shit holes. On dying, I realized I couldn't even make a bed because I had access to no wool. So I had to manually make my way back up there. And then I went exploring for a bit and actually found a Free Pal Alliance base. Now, this had a Doomud located within it. So obviously I had to free him and get myself a Doomud. How could I turn this big lovable dude down? Doomud, Doomud be mine. Let's go! Got ourselves a Doomud. We take those high quality power oil. We got a little bit. All right. So after gaining a couple of initial powers, I then went ahead and built my power box for my first base. We got Floppy to help us out with the handiwork stuff around the base. We made ourselves up an old bow and then we headed back out into a dungeon to try and kill some syndicate thugs and get some money as well as XP as these were going to be our main way of generating XP for myself and my team was just killing syndicate thugs. Thankfully, they do kind of respawn infinitely in the dungeons. So alongside Arsex, I went ahead and fought some of these syndicate thugs. I also tried to capture my first one. 6% chance. Thankfully, we managed to catch him. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I then managed to make my way to the dungeon boss where we fought Vixie. Now, I know I did say that we wouldn't be fighting any pals. Technically, it's my pals fighting them and I didn't really damage them. I did kill these guys to get a little bit of a start so that I could get enough ancient civilization components to actually build incubators. And then I found a black marketeer trader who I tried to capture with a 0% chance. Obviously, that was going to go down well for me with his minigun in action. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, shit. <laughs> Now, from killing the Vixie, I managed to get some rubies and some of the pelts. So I sold that and bought our first pal, Mozzarina. I also sold the Syndicate Thug that I had caught for 170 gold. Then went back into another dungeon and killed a Mao. Like I mentioned, I did need to kill some bosses because I needed to get the ancient civilized components in order to make the incubators. I needed those, like there was nothing I could really do. I sold the materials gathered from Mao for some pretty decent money and bought myself a Chicka Pie. The main thing I was looking for here was to get the things up and running so that I could make cakes so I could breed and eventually obviously make my army of pals. I also managed to buy a lamb ball so that we now had wool production. I got the ranch down at the base and put all of our production pals into there getting as much resources produced as I possibly could. I then got to work at building my base starting with foundation, a wall and a ceiling and then I returned back to the trader to buy some wool so I could make a bed and I upgraded my base creating the fruit box as well as beds and a refining table and I spent the rest of the day mining stone. It was then time to face my first overworld boss, Chillin. Now, obviously, Chillit was only getting tranquilized. It wasn't getting murdered or anything by R6. We just once again needed some ancient civilization parts 
for some necessary technology. Kind of impossible for me to be able to progress in the game without the ancient civilization parts, and for that I did need to kill some bosses, including the bestest boy, Chilton. We were only robbing them of their parts, that's all we were doing, we weren't, we weren't killing them. I also needed the ancient technology points as well from killing them. I then returned back to the PAL trader buying another chicken pie and a rush ore with the runner passive skill which was really good. I also bought a bunch more of wool as our lamb ball wasn't really producing too much stuff. I then went in to try and fight Penking because I once again needed an ancient technology point. Uh, and well... To say that it went terribly was an understatement. Obviously we had Floppy, we were level 15, so we were pretty decently leveled for the Pen King, but uh, he kind of just absolutely demolished us alongside his little Pen Gullet minions. We just got absolutely clobbered. Poor Doomud got absolutely bodied, I got absolutely bodied and frozen. There wasn't really too much I could do against the Pen King and his Pen Gullet entourage. Okay, we got ourselves some cloth. We can make ourselves... Ooh, we can make ourselves a rare tropical outfit. Is it worth it though? We're probably gonna... I'm gonna save it. I then managed to get my first harvest of ranch resources, built another pal bed as our pal base was expanding and they needed more beds. And I went to sleep for the night before I froze to death. The next morning, I went ahead and fought some more syndicate thugs for some more XP. I was obviously killing these guys as the main source. These were going to be pretty much our only way of leveling up. And I did manage to catch both of the syndicate thugs there as well, which was great. More money. I then found a skill fruit tree, getting a couple of ice skills as well as water skills. They're always coming in handy. And then I found another stronghold where we had a life monk. I was super happy about life monk. We need a life monk because we don't have anyone who's a planter. So that's really good for us. Nice. <gasps> oh, that was so close. Oh my God, my heart just dropped there. I thought I hit the mammoth. I then found the lavender field stronghold and they had a pen gullet. While they were all distracted, I freed pen gullet, getting some power fluids in the process. I was going to need a crap ton of these and you'll, you'll see later on in the video. Power fluids are not fun. I found another camp with a flamer and a machine gunner, and they killed me pretty easily. At the ranch, however, at the base, we had tons of resources coming in from mozzarella, chicken pie, and lamble. I was super happy. This was going to be great for our cake production later down the line. I managed to return back to my body, gathering my pals as well as my items. Returned back to the stronghold, freeing Nox, and then found another floppy stronghold where I freed as well. I found another stronghold with the Syndicate Crusher. Tried to catch in, that didn't work out very well. They had a Totoko lo locked up here as well, so I wanted to try and get him, obviously, but I did manage to catch another Syndicate Thug with a runner tray. Never know when you're gonna need that. I found a Kativa stronghold, freed that guy, and died in the process while freeing Kativa. He better bloody appreciate the little bastard. Oh my god, look at all the good stuff. Okay, everyone's distracted by the Lambos outside the base. We're gonna just grab all of this. Thank you very much. Another Totoko. Glitching out the audio. Nice. And throw a pal out, and I'm being super sneaky and walking behind him. I'll take it. Ooh. All right, I'd say a pretty solid haul for not being able to capture any pals. Oh, shit. This is not good. This is not good. Uh, Tansy, Totoko, Totoko, Kativa, you guys are up. Oh, they're only level one. Did my Totoko just self-destruct? It most definitely did. Okay, that's fine. Nice. All right, they were weaker than I was expecting. I thought they were going to be super high level. Alrighty, we've got some eggs incubating now that we've got some incubators set up. It was then time to sell all of our syndicate members to the trader. Obviously, partaking in human trafficking is definitely a big no-no, but I really needed the money. I then also bought a Fox Sparks with Musclehead and Masochist, not realizing that Masochist actually lowers its attack as well. So it was kind of just a neutral Fox Sparks. I then started hatching the first of my eggs, getting a Serpent as well as a Flame Bell. I made Rush Shaw's saddle so I could ride him and put down the logging site as well as the stone pits so we could get some more resources and a crusher as well. I also put the furnace so I could start trying to smelt some of these ores that I had and get ingots to get nails to get a bunch of money. I got to work making some arrows up, hatched a pen king from a large damp egg as well, got him out in the base, and then I found a spark it in another stronghold. Obviously, with the syndicate gunners distracted, I freed him, and then it was time to face Zoe and Grizzbolt. I felt like our powers were pretty solid at this stage. We had Fox Sparks with the harness as well, so we could use a flamethrower and melt the sucker to smithereens. 
Uh, I did have R6 as well as Doomite and Rushor. Now, obviously, Doomite and Rushor would do extra damage to Zoe and Grizzbolt, but after a hell of a slog and four minutes of constantly shooting a barrage and Rushor tackling, we were finally able to kill Zoe and Grizzbolt. It did take a bit of time, however, but I mean, the 10 minute time limit was still okay. 95 health, and just like that, we managed to kill them, getting a decent chunk of XP. I returned back to the trader and bought another Fox Sparks, a female aggressive one, and we returned back to base to upgrade it. And then we did our round again of releasing powers from the stronghold as they had finally respawned back in. We did get one. We got two. Plus the Bristler. Let's free the Bristler. Sounds like we just caught another one. All right, we got another one. Nice. Fair by the dozens. I ain't worried. Two more. Let's go. Alrighty guys, we just made a quick pit stop to the Black Marketeer and we're just going to sell our human pals. Do a little bit of slave trading. Uh, two grand, I'll take it. What have we got? We've got another Bristler, I think. Is that? I'm pretty sure that's its name, Bristler. Oh shit. Machine gun dude just killed me. We did catch one of them though. Nice. Catching more of them. Can we get the assault rifle guy? Let's go. Easy. After hitting up more of the strongholds and gaining my body back, I then did some exploring and found a huge verdant egg on the bank side, which was great. Also found another egg and then returned back to base where we got raided by a bunch of lavanders. Now, obviously I had to defend myself. I don't really have much of a choice with the raids. I did forget to turn them off uh, when we set the settings. And obviously when you're trying to do a pacifist run and you've got raids coming at you, you obviously have to fight the, the pals that come at you, right? Like, there's not really too much you can do in that situation, unfortunately, which is something I didn't think about. I then made my way up to where the Free Pal Alliance devouts were because I knew there were more camps up there. And we managed to free a Mao from their camp. We found a Black Marketeer trader as well and tried to trade with him. I didn't really vibe with anything that he was selling, so we didn't buy anything. We freed another floppy from a Free Pal Alliance uh, stronghold as well. And then I returned back to base, making myself up metal tools, as well as hatching the large Vernon egg where we got a Robin quill. And I also made myself a mega shield. Oh God, please make it. Oh, you freaking bastards. All right, let's hatch this huge Verdant Egg, see what we get out of it. I'm excited. What do we got? Oh. Oh, so close yet so far. Eliza B, why couldn't you be a freaking bee guard? Our body is being guarded by a Missander. How the hell am I going to get my body back? That's not fair. He shot me through the wall. That doesn't count. I did manage to get my body back, thankfully, and all my pals, and then I headed up to another camp that I spotted above this clip face here. Now, it was a heck of a grind, not a grind, but a heck of a climb to get up here, but it was definitely worth it as we had managed to find a Masanda Lux in this stronghold. We want ourselves that Masanda Lux, 100%. Do I make that jump? I don't think I do. I do make it if I come across here though. Hardcore, this is the hardcore. safer option. Let's go. We get ourselves a Masanda Lux. I'll be a very happy chap. Just don't mind me, fellas. Coming through to your camp. Nobody saw me because I walked behind you. Let's go. Alright. I'm going to throw a Gigasphere here. Try my luck. Yep. That's negative luck. Let's get out of here. I then wanted to head over into the desert, obviously, to try and get the fast travel points as well as the extra Black Marketeer trader in the settlement. So me and Rushor decided to go on a little journey together, swimming across, hoping to make it. And thankfully, we did make it across to the desert. However, we were very far away from the shelter. So I spent a long time getting to the shelter. Thankfully, I did manage to make it to it. So we did have our fast travel point available to us as well as the brand new Black Marketeer Trader over here. And this guy was going to be very pivotal for later on in the game as I was trying to track down a bee guard in order to be able to produce honey as none of the traders sold honey as far as I was aware. We also needed a bunch of power fluids as well to make a hot spring and press our base. I could not find power fluids anywhere. The only way we could get power fluids was by killing powers, obviously, and we couldn't kill powers. 
So that wasn't going to happen. We did take on Penking here as we did need some more ancient uh, technology points. So we did manage to kill Penking, but I didn't kill any of the pen gullets. So we didn't get any power fluids from killing them as well. And also Penking doesn't drop any power fluids. So the only way we would be able to get power fluids was by freeing aquatic based pals that were in the strongholds. I did found another Vixie as well, so we freed her. But yeah, power fluids was mainly the main thing holding us back at this stage as I needed to make the hot spring and I didn't have 10 power fluids to make it. So I had to go around to all the strongholds once again, trying to free all the powers that we could in hopes that one of them would eventually be an aquatic tame that we would get power fluids from when we freed them. And as you can see, obviously we were just having no luck. We found a Dazzy, we found a, uh, a Fuddler, I'm pretty sure his name is. We found a Flame Bell, but no aquatic paste freaking powers. So at this stage, we only had, I believe, three power fluids and we needed 10. So we needed to find three more aquatic powers to release. We found a Nox as well, just going around to literally all of the strongholds trying to free everything. I then returned back to base to hatch some of the eggs that were ready to hatch. We got another Robin Quill from a large Verdant Egg. We got another Life Monk from another Stronghold. And I also found some Dark Heads while wandering around looking for the Strongholds with Rushall. I then found another Trader here who I would hope would sell Power Fluids. But alas, he did not sell any Power Fluids either. So, I was struggling. I then also found a Jolt Hog Christ. And then, let's go. I finally found a Surf. Surfing should give us some Power Fluid. We need all the Power Fluid we can get our hands on. I don't think I've ever seen a Surfing in one of these. Oh shit, oh shit, shit. I need the power fluid. Come on, give me power fluid, Surfing. Yes, three more power fluid. We need two more water types to get enough power fluid to build a bloody hot spring. I also found a flame bell, and then we're back out in the desert. We've got another Doom Muddy. We're going to grab him as quick as we can and get out of here while everyone's distracted. I have no idea what they're chasing, but I ain't complaining. Oh, we've got one duty. Come on, Doom Mud. You're coming with me, mate. You're free. Let's get out of here. He's going to feel that in the morning. Holy smokes. He went flying. Oh, let's go. We've got a Pengala down here. Exactly what we need. Another water type. Give me those power fluids, baby. Means we can make another... Means we can make a singular hot spring. We haven't made a freaking hot spring yet. Come here, Pengala. You're coming with us, mate. Come on, quick. Quick. All right, we're good. I then spend the next few days once again just releasing more pals from their prison. Obviously, they were granting me XP as well, which is really helpful, but I was really just looking for the power fluids at this stage. That is literally all I needed to try and progress. I then took Rushor and decided to cross the stream into uh, the uh, ice area. Alrighty, guys, we are pretty beat up and battered at the moment. We did just make our way over here to the uh, start of the ice island, which is good. We've got a huge ice egg over here, which we're going to go grab. Armor is damaged, pal team is hungry, I'm hungry. Things aren't looking great. We're still missing one goddamn aquatic tame to get the power fluid. But we did just get a huge frozen egg, which I'll take. So we're gonna head back to base now. We're gonna repair our armor, get some food into us and the pal team. Cause we, we're dying out here, we're dying. We need to, need to head back. I tried to find a trader that would hopefully have some uh, power fluids, but I haven't had any luck whatsoever, which is really sucky. I then returned back to the base to hatch some more eggs that we got. We got a Capriti, and then I made myself some cold resistant pelt armor as well, as it was a massive upgrade over what I currently had on. I then went back to the trader buying some bones, as well as checking out the pal trader without anything. Come on, drop a power fluid for me. Drop a power fluid for me, fwack. I know you want to. I know you're not going to, because I'm not going to attack you, but drop one, please. I'm begging you, I just did one. Oh, God. I then went around checking any other traders that I had missed to see if they had any power fluids and alas, the answer to that question was no. No one sells any power fluids, which is really annoying. So, once again, back to the stronghold grind, freeing a male, grabbing a dark egg in this area, and finding another floppy in a free pal area. You would have done me so many favours. Then while exploring, I thought I'd be safe jumping down into this river, right? The water would break my fall, surely. I swear to God, the urge to not slaughter these pen gullets is so annoying. I just want to murder them all and get the goddamn power fluid that I need. Oh, at least we've got the glider now, finally. Cool, alright. Well, someone finally crafted that up. Let's go ahead and get our body back. 
I just need one more singular power fluid. Just god damn it. After obtaining my body, I then made my way to the black marketeer, selling all of the humans that I had captured. To say that my mental health was draining from this power fluid is an understatement. I was going insane. I was losing my bloody mind. All right, fingers crossed that this is an aquatic. I think it's another life monk. Oh, the pain. No, it's a Vixie. I mean, that's not much better, to be honest. This hunting for a single aquatic pal is honestly killing me. I've spent so long trying to find one. And I'm dying. We got lucky getting those two earlier, but oh my god, the slog is real. I just cannot find any of them. I'm not having any luck whatsoever. On returning back to base, I then hatched the huge frozen egg that I had got, getting an Ice King packer from it as well, which was really good. Alright, looks like the camps are starting to spawn back in. Thank god for that, because I'm going freaking batshit crazy. I'm praying that there's an aquatic in this. I'm praying with all the fibers of my very being because this is killing me. Please. Please let me be a water type. Please. I can't handle this. Alright, here we go. Oh, it's a dazzy. Alright, here we go. Round two. I swear to god, this patali this Bristler is the bane of my existence every single damn time it's one of these things. Come on, please. I'm praying, I'm begging. Oh, for fuck's sake. Another Bristler. Alrighty guys, we've got three more camps here. So we've got one over here, one over there, one up there. Now, I've just had an idea, which I'm not entirely sure if it'll work, but I'm thinking whether or not we can cause the pal in the cage to respawn if we leave the render range because i know in the dungeons if you go back a couple of rooms from the dungeon boss it resets what the dungeon boss is so i'm gonna give it a shot i don't know if it's gonna work because obviously the camps and stuff like that you know what i should go further let's go like all the way over here I'm hoping that this works, because if this does, we can technically keep going until we get a water type. And then hopefully from there we can get to spring, because... <sighs> and then hopefully we can get to level 10, have the two bases, and then we can transfer everything over to the new base. So it is still a flame bell, which means it doesn't reset. Alright, so we're just going to have to keep exploring until... We'll keep checking them until we get one. Alright, come on. Oh, fuck. I got so excited when I started seeing blue. I was like, yes, this is it. Psych. At least we don't have a rib bunny, so it should give us extra XP, I guess. Oh, yes, let's go. It's a serpent. Finally, what we've been waiting for. Oh, this is so satisfying. All right. And Sander, you can come out, mate, and just deal with absolutely everything. Oh, I'm so excited. We finally have enough power fluid now to make the hot spring. Give me that power fluid. There it is. That's what we needed. Oh, man, this is so much better now. Bro, do you mind? You're about to get freaking clobbered. Alright, come on. We're gonna catch this guy? That's a negative. Go beat them up. Shit, I'm gonna die. I gotta get out of here. Oh man, that makes me so happy. Finally. After days and days and days of looking for a goddamn aquatic pal, we finally found Relaxosaurus. Not Relaxosaurus, sorry. The Serpent. Oh. Now we can build the hot spring, get our base upgraded, move on. How good is that going to be? Oh, here it is. Finally. The hot spring. Oh, everyone get to work. Let's build it. Everyone's fallen down off the cliff. We need to get into a new base spot because this, this is... I picked a terrible spot. Upgrade. Oh, wait. No, one more. Cooler box in the sphere workbench. I got so excited. Oh, I had a heart attack there. I saw blue. I thought it wanted power fluid and I was going to cry. I was going to cry. All right, here we go. Let's do it. Level two, baby. Can now build two bases. Wonderful. We're going to head out. I'm going to set up the new spot. 
and then I think we'll call it a day. Now that I had the ability to build a second base, that is exactly what I did in the optimum spot that I was planning on building at. Now at this base spot, we had access to about five metal nodes just in the circumference of the base area. However, I did try and move it around a little bit so that uh, there would be enough space for them to respawn and everything like that. So this was gonna be our next base spot. I headed back out to the dune shelter to try and capture some of the merchants out here because obviously I just wanted to expand my collection of merchants. I had some extra balls and I know these guys are lower level so they're a bit easier to capture. Thankfully, however, I was able to capture one of the merchants so we had access to him now. Uh, it was only the wandering one, not the power one, but I did die in the process, but that didn't stop me from returning the next day and dying once again, trying to capture these guys. I really wanted to get the power merchant, just to have, I guess, so we could buy some more powers, but we did manage to catch him and then we got raided. However, with this new base spot, they couldn't actually get to us. So now that we had our new base spot up and running, it was time to try and get into breeding. However, for breeding, we needed a bee guard. He was the producer of honey and I don't think there was any way for us to purchase honey. So I needed to track down a bee guard in order to get some honey production going so that I could make the cakes. So the only real way for me to get a bee guard, I believe, was to free it from a stronghold or to purchase it from a black marketeer or get it from an egg. So I began the arduous journey of traveling across the map, gathering eggs along my journeys, coming across multiple pal alliance bases and normal bases trying to find myself a bee guard for that juicy juicy honey production instead all i got was this super sad chicken bite we are in trouble oh shit these guys are strong oh god we're in trouble a hungry herd of relax oh god Missander just did a ton of damage to that one guys just do it. oh my god do what you can Defend yourselves. Everything is going to hell. Missanda, you're in charge. Oh my god, did someone do something? Defend the base. Missanda, Missanda, attack. What are you doing? Get him, Missanda. You're in charge. Oh shit. Oh shit. We're just going to focus his bugging out one. Nope, he's not bugging out anymore. Missanda, get him, please. All right, we're taking one of them down. Can I, can I put someone else? Oh. I think Missanda just died. We got no one stronger. Usyx, come out and help. Do mud, you too. I think Missander's out. He's out for the life. Let's 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 go. Huggy fire time. I don't think this is gonna do much damage, but I'll take it. Okay. There's one more. Why is Eliza B all the way over there? What is going on? Okay, we survived the hungry relaxosauruses. You know how I was complaining about there always being easy raids? Yeah, well, I take that back. I want the easy ones back. Although, good news, we do get a lot of pal oil from this. So after dealing with the Relaxosaurus raid, I then headed out and tried to capture the Black Marketeer traders that I found so that I could try and get an easier chance of getting a bee guard. And this was pretty much what happened over the next couple of days. Me just hitting up all the Black Marketeers trying to find a bee guard. Now, I'm like 90% sure that none of the merchants sell any honey, but I'm starting to doubt myself now and I'm like, uh, did some of the merchants actually sell honey? I don't know. But we did go around to plenty of the black marketeers. We were constantly traveling around to try and reset them and everything like that. We did stumble across this war sec that I was really tempted to buy as well. It was going to cost us 17000 which was about half of our money. So I was kind of hesitant to purchase it. I really wanted a war sec though. They're such badass dudes. And that one did have uh, hard skin and fragrant foliage. So I was really tempted to get it, but I opted not to at the moment. At the moment so to actually speed things up again i also demolished our second base location and set it up just outside of the black marketeer so i could fast travel between these points i hatched a bunch of eggs getting a nightwing a mao and a lunaris as well and i crafted up a bunch more nails so that i had some more money coming in then finally after traveling around to multiple black marketeer merchants i finally struck gold <gasps> Oh my god, it's a goddamn miracle. Finally, we have one. You know what the sad thing is? I could have bought the fucking war sect as well. Oh, give me that. Let's go. Finally, we have ourselves a bee guard. Oh, bee guard, get in there and do some work. Give me that honey. Plus 20% work speed as well, which is really good. So after selling a bunch of stuff, I then went ahead and finally bought myself my war sect. Now he had serious and hard skin, which was kind of sad, but at the same time, it was all right. I then went ahead and placed down where I was going to build my proper base. 
I was getting attacked by a Relaxosaurus, however, I just ignored him and fast traveled back to my first base, gathering all of the good honey and resources that were there. And then I started setting up at the new base when I once again got another raid of Violent Pals. Obviously, I just ignored them. They had no way to get up here, so we were sweet. Now, so began the slow, tedious process of transferring items to the new base. And uh, apparently, I'm a very avid tree climber as well. And I like to glitch into trees too. It was then time to hatch a bunch of eggs, getting a Wraith as well as a Catrus, which was pretty good actually. I was pretty stoked about those. And the transferring of the items continued. I did demolish a lot of the structures that were at the old base, mainly because I needed the power fluid from the hot spring so I could build a new hot spring at the new base. And I got everything set up. So we had some new crops set up and everything like that. I figured we would need sort of the necessities just to get up and running. I didn't really spend too much time on designing a nice looking base area this round, mainly because I knew most of my time would be spent on trying to organize breeding. Due to the fact that I couldn't catch any pals, I was going to have to spend a lot of time sort of figuring out ways to get XP, killing the human enemies in the game, as well as breeding a bunch. And here was my house as well. It wasn't really anything fancy like I mentioned. It had a bed, it had a roof, and it was functional. That's all I needed, thankfully. Alrighty, so at the base, we're gonna leave some tansies, some uh, bristlers, some mouths as well to generate some cash for us. Uh, I've also got some fuddlers here so they can do some mining and some chopping. So hopefully we generate quite a bit of that. And we've also got a serpent here who's watering. So that should be everything we need to keep this base up and running for the time being. Oh man, this thing's going to be the fucking death of me. Honestly thinking about just taking it. Okay, now it's going to grazing. All right, good, 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 good. That's good to see. About bloody time. So through the night, I mined a bunch of the metal nodes near the base. And boy, oh boy, we had a shit ton of metal coming in now. So they would respawn in about two days, so we were having heaps of metal coming in. I also wanted to make a water fountain, but obviously uh, the lack of power fluids kind of disabled that option. So that kind of sucked. I did make a couple of extra uh, structures that boosted things around, and I also built a chest near the ore so we could just chuck all the ore that we mined up straight into that. Alright, so everyone seems happy. We've got cloth being made up, we've got ore nodes being brought back in again. I don't know if I got the energy to be bothered with these again, to be honest. We're still getting this all cooked up. I don't think I need it right now. How are our cakes coming along? Dope, got ourselves a musket. Uh, I don't think I need to make any ammo for it though. What I do want to make is some metal armor. Well, I think I can learn a better one. What do we got? Let's see where we're up to. We can make heat resistant metal armor. Yeah, that's flame organs. We can do that. Alrighty, so we've just made a bunch of nails up. Thanks to Lenaris absolutely churning those out. And we're going to sell these nails. Look at that. 11 grand. We're going to sell all of those. Perfect. I then headed out to another black marketeer trader and actually found a woolly pop for sale. So I bought that up so we could get some cotton candy production going. I also found a swift and work slave Rayhound from one of our other traders. And I bought the Rayhound as well. Now, the plan for this was that I was going to go ahead and breed Missander Lux and Rayhound together to try and get some Anubises, as they were going to be really good for our base, and obviously we would use them for mining and for the handicraft. Thankfully, they breed it up, and I did get my first huge rocky egg. Now, I just needed to hatch it and find out whether or not it was going to be an Anubis, and we had to wait an hour for that. I then decided to take Warsec out on a little adventure, clear some of these stronghold camps, as these were a really good source of XP for us, as they had plenty of humans to kill, uh, and it allowed us to level up our powers and myself. Plus, we got extra XP from freeing the powers. So, we freed a Kativa, we also found a couple of other strongholds as well, and brought Fox Sparks out for the flamethrower. Freed the flambelle that was locked up here, and we made some more nails up with Lunaris, as this was going to be our main source of income going forward. Now, this was recorded before the latest patch where they have nerfed nails now, so unfortunately, you probably won't be able to get the same amount of money that you would get from doing this now. I also continued the cake production. I returned back to the small settlement as well, because I did want to try and catch these guys, but these guys also sold cheap pals. Now, the reason I say that is because buying these cheap powers would actually grant us some decent XP. It was one of the few ways that we could actually get some decent XP. So you can see every time we bought a power, we did get some XP. So this was going to be my main way of gaining XP in the future. So I headed once again back out to free some of the powers from their locked up cages. I figured I was doing the world a favor by freeing them. 
I also went ahead and killed a couple of the extra free pal alliance members just for that extra bit of XP. We're around that level 26 mark, so we needed the XP. I also made some more nails up that I was going to sell to my uh, very closely kept merchants because, you know, I'm totally not subjecting them to slavery or anything like that and keeping them prisoners against their will. Absolutely not occurring here whatsoever. But I did make a pretty penny off of those nails and I got Lunaris back onto crafting more of them while we waited for our Nubus egg to hatch up. I returned back to uh, the uh, village trader and bought a bunch of the pals and eventually got another level up, hitting level 27. It was going to be a very slow grind to get to that level and we were going to need a lot of money. I also found a rare Masander here and I really, really wanted to get him, but obviously I can't because we're not allowed to capture pals. I also went ahead killing more of the free pal alliance members. I just needed that sweet juicy XP. So we kind of went on a killing spree with Rushaw and just killed pretty much all of them in sight. It helped that the local pal populace also wanted to help. I then went ahead and grabbed a, an egg in the snow biome, returned back to the trader once again, buying his whole inventory of pals. I needed that juicy XP, baby. Give it to me. All right, so we've got to build a generator and a sphere assembly line. I'm probably going to build them and deconstruct them, to be honest, because I don't think I really get much of a use out of them, which is a shame, but I mean, it is what it is. All right, we've got another Anubis egg ready to go. These guys are seven minutes out. So what I'm going to do is I feel like I could probably go fight Lily and Lilene. I'm going to give it a best shot. Uh, actually, before I do, I want to build the Statue of Power. After I built the Statue of Power, I then went ahead and upgraded Fox Sparks' attack, as this also enhances her flamethrower ability, her Huggy Fire. So I figured, why not? Right, well, I mean, it, I mean, it does a little bit because it is part of her attack and she was already uh, infused. So I figured she would do some decent damage to Lily and Lilene, which is exactly where we went. And straight away, we're using uh, the Huggy Fire on Lily and Lilene and we're doing pretty decent damage, 128 sort of per tick, which was pretty solid. And in 20 seconds, we had already done about 6K damage to her. So I was pretty happy with that, but I did bring Rush a bunch all, of mate. fire powers and me thankfully uh, me and Rushall were the last two standing. I'm not going to lie, it was very close. It didn't help that my shots were missing. She had 3,000 health left and there was a, th a minute left on the clock. Rushall was missing his attacks. He was our last living pal. It was going to come down to the wire. This is going to be so damn close. Oh, shit. Oh, I can't afford that. Come on, come on. 50 seconds. I'm going to get four shots off, I think. Oh, my God. Holy shit. That was fucking close. Oh, man. I can't believe we pulled that off. Just. First egg is ready to hatch. Let's get ourselves an Anubis. Boom. Swift, Blood of the Dragon, and Work Slave. Work slave is what we want. Swift is just an extra bonus, but we can always pass this down later down the line. All right, here we go. We've got our other Anubis egg ready to hatch. Swift, work slave, and blood of the dragon. Same thing. All right, cool. Yeah, look at these guys go. This is what I wanted to see. It's good that they're mining. I mean, we've got like three nodes, four nodes in the base vicinity. Alrighty guys, we've got a bunch of nails ready to sell. So I sold the nails, getting a hefty profit in the process of $35,000. And I went ahead and bought a valet from a black marketeer trader. I'm not sure why I bought it, just figured it had good things. I also bought a Relaxosaurus as well. Alrighty, so we're going to try and get our way towards a Reptoro. So for that, we're going to need Eliza B. And Missanda Lux. And that should give us a Pyron. One problem though. I just realized Eliza Bees are always female, I'm pretty sure. So our next boss fight was going to be Marcus and Phalera. So I wanted to prepare for that. So I had Anubis and Nightwing in the breeding to try and get an Azuro. And with that, we managed to get ourselves our first large damp egg. So Azuro was probably going to be the easiest form of water type that we could get for Marcus and Phalera. So obviously we had Yormantad and stuff like that. But we couldn't really breed them at this current stage, which sucked. Oh, hello, beautiful. Have you got my name written all over you? I think you do. That's got to be a huge scorching egg, right? Got to be. Come to Papa. Let's go. Oh, how I wish I could capture you, Raptoro. Oh, how I wish I could capture you. 
Oh god, it's so sad. Please, just let me let me throw one spear. Just just in a sad attempt. Oh god. Oh how I wish I could go and catch you, you big old legend as well. We're missing out on so many powers, it's painful. I don't even know how to navigate the volcano. I'm pretty sure I need like a flyer to get through this. I'm trying to get to the riverside town, but like obviously that's very far away from where we are. And at the same time, I'm like, well, this is fun. So I don't know. I'm going to try and make my way over to the desert town. That's where really where I want to go. So we have access to another power merchant. So we'll see how we go. If anyone ever tells you to scale a volcano, just don't do it. Just say no. This is, this is not what I wanted to do. But here we are nonetheless. On the plus side, got another egg. I'm going to be so mad if I don't make it up this bloody mountainside. I'll tell you what. There goes all my progress. Ain't got time for food. Gotta get this freaking mountain. Gotta get up it. I don't think that's steep enough for us to stop on. I don't think I'm gonna make it. I'm scared. Oh, that was close. All right, we're gonna just go straight up here, I reckon. That was actually a really good grapple. Oh my God, yes, let's go. Oh. I remember when I climbed the mountain. It was much easier than this, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't have to scale it on all fours going up the side like this. This dude ain't even holding on, look at that skill. I see the tower. It's just a nice easy glide from here, I think. Yes, we made it. In probably the most difficult fashion possible, but we bloody made it. I will take it. Oh, let's go. After that harrowing journey, I returned back to the base to hatch some of the eggs that we had here and we got our first Azurobe. Didn't have the greatest passive skills, but we took what we got. Also grabbed some ingots, made some more ingots and turned those other ingots that we had into nails. I wanted all the money. I returned back to Fisherman's Point as well to unlock the fast travel point and took a look at the trader. I really wanted a rep to row for our uh, boss fight coming up against the Ozerk boss. But they were very expensive to buy, so I was kind of hesitant to purchase it, but I did want to include them in our uh, repertoire of traders. So I returned over to the other trader, and I also bought a Wixen in the process as well. Now, I wanted to capture these guys, like I said, and add them to our collection. So I figured, why the hell not throw our first ball out and give it a shot? Unfortunately, it didn't capture him, but I mean, we had plenty of other chances, right? Fuck. <laughs> I should have killed him. Uh, I'm glad I bought the Wixen before I murdered this dude. I love how I had the assault charge and then because I killed him, no one witnessed the crime, so it just vanished. So with the Pal Merchant dead, I figured I'd try and capture the Wandering Merchant at least. At least then I could at least get one of the merchants. Thankfully, he did get captured. However, I did have a couple of assault charges. Now I wanted to test something out while I had the assault charge. I wanted to see if these guys gave any XP when we killed them because technically we could just get an infinite amount of these guys spawning in. However, every time I shot one, they kind of like reset, so it wasn't really too reliable in terms of XP. So I just let them kill me in the process because it wasn't gonna work out how I wanted it to. Returned back to base and hatched a bunch of the eggs that we had, getting a Van Wirum, not greatest skills, and I also got another Anubis as well. I was pretty happy about those. I returned back to the shore site to try and catch the Pal Merchant. Because he was the fire-based one, capturing him would enable us to constantly refresh his shop. And obviously he's got a lot less uh, variance as the other Pal Traders, as each area of Pal Trader has their own sort of Pals that they have in their shops. So thankfully I was able to finally capture the Pal Merchant as well and we could refresh his stock whenever we wanted to. Return back to the base, hatch some more of the fire eggs that we got from exploring the volcano bunch of Kelpsy Inguses as well as Totokos and a Fang Lope as well. I did go ahead and try and buy an Incineram as well because I figured he'd have super high uh, kindling. Turns out I was extremely incorrect in that fashion and uh, I was severely disappointed. I mean that's not the worst thing I guess. What? He's only got level 1 kindling and I just spent 30 grand on him? Oh, kill me now. I then made a Fanglope saddle up as well as I've never ridden around on a Fanglope and I figured it'd be faster than our rush or... Right, what could possibly go wrong? Yo, Fanglope is kind of... Oh shit, Fanglope is fast. I haven't rode one of these guys before. Yo, that double jump is crazy. 
I kind of wish we had Runner on it. After discovering how fast Fanglope was, I went ahead and hatched a bunch of the eggs, and they were mainly just van rooms. Nothing very exciting, unfortunately. Now, with our new Fanglope, I went ahead and headed back out to the volcano area. We were starting to get a little bit higher in level, and I figured we could start trying to kill some of the uh, flame dudes located over on Mount Obsidian, which is exactly what we went ahead and did. Now, these guys gave a decent chunk of XP as well. I also wanted this egg up here on this tower. So thankfully with Fanglope's help and my mad parkour skills, I was actually able to make it up to the top of this tower and grab this egg. It was only a small egg, so it kind of wasn't worth it, but I returned back to base hatching more of our powers, managing to get a blaze howl knocked, selling a bunch of nails for some decent money. Alrighty guys, we've done some things. We've got these eggs incubating. You saw us buy two van worms, one with the ferocious skill, one with the muscle head skill. So really, really good. So what we're going to try and do is incorporate that into one. So yeah, so we've got Ferocious, which is plus 20% attack. And then we've also got Musclehead, which is plus 30% attack. So that's an extra 50% attack if we can get that uh, stacked onto someone, which is what we're going to try and do. So we're going to try and get it onto Phileris. Uh, so now the remainder of what needed to be done was pretty much get levels breed pals. And to do that, we needed to buy pals. So it pretty much consisted of us just making a butt ton of nails, going to black market tier traders, collecting eggs, just breeding our pals up, getting as much cake as we possibly can. I did go and open up some of these chests as well as killing the pal genetic researchers as well, because they would give us really good XP, them being level 40, 10 to help. We got mined a bunch of ores, because obviously we needed to keep making ingots to keep making the nails, to keep making the money, to keep making the XP. We kept returning back to uh, the first pal trader in the village because we hadn't successfully captured him. And you can see there, that was our main source of getting XP. So I pretty much hit up all the pal traders in the area, all the cheap ones anyway, so that I could buy 10 of each pal. So that we would get that XP bonus and then we would just get more XP. Between this and killing the human uh, enemies, this was our best way. I also finally made a pal speed to get rid of the tutorial in the top corner of the screen. It had been taking me forever to get rid of that. But uh, it was finally gone now. It only took us forever. But once again, the process just continued. Buying more pals, getting more XP. I then went back to base and started hatching some of these eggs that we had received. The Van Wyrum Christ was one of the uh, pals that we received. We also got a couple more Van Wyrums. Surprise, surprise. They were pretty much all that we found in those fire eggs. Between them and Kelpsy Ingnuses, there wasn't really too much in them. We also got a Foxicool who we hadn't actually seen or gotten before. Uh, even in my last playthrough, Foxicool was missing and I, I just couldn't find it anywhere. So I was pretty cool, impressed with how it looked. All right, we are gonna be very rich after we get these nails. Holy smokes, that's 770 nails. It's gonna be like a hundred and something grand. I'm very excited. Uh, so we've got a raid in here, but I mean, they're all the way down there, so I ain't even worried about it. Just got another 201 refined ingots, which is wonderful. We're going to go ahead and get some more refining. Considering this is our only way of generating any kind of XP, uh, you can't really blame me for doing so. I do need to get into gunpowder and stuff like that, though, because we are going to need handguns. Uh, I feel like we could take the musket with us, but I feel like handguns probably are going to be a little bit better to use on the bosses because the reason I say that, there's no way we're going to get enough high quality pal oil to actually be able to make any of the high T weapons, which sucks. So we're just going to have to stick through it with handguns, unfortunately. All right, here we go. Let's sell these nails. Oh, come on, catch up to the bastard. Come back here. Come on, into my path. Let's go. All right, here we go. How much does 788 nails sell for? 126 grand. We will take that happily. I'm also going to sell this pelt armor. 300. Yeah, we don't need it. Get rid of it, it's broken. That was a pretty solid haul. This should be a Phileris hatching out of this, I believe. We'll take a look. Ooh! That is actually exactly what we want. We got Swift and Musclehead in it. That is very, very good. I am very happy with that. I didn't know it learned uh, Earth moves. That's actually pretty effective too. Um, okay, that has got me very exciting because I'm pretty sure we can also breed Phileris with other stuff to get better stuff as well. I just have to check out what that exactly is, but I'm very excited for Phileris. 
So I still want to try and get some Van Wyrams with Ferocious and Musclehead slotted in together because then I want to obviously try and get that with Phileris as well. So then we can have Ferocious, Musclehead and Swift, which would make our Phileris very powerful, very quick. What do we got out of here? We got Ferocious and Musclehead. So after getting a bunch of different Phileruses, I don't even remember why I was actually trying to breed those guys. I'm pretty sure they would go into something else. Nonetheless, I did spend some more time buying more pals, freeing some more pals from their prison. Just freeing more pals. Anything that would give me XP, I was doing it because we just needed to get a bunch of it. As well as that, they also gave us a few resources. So we were getting high quality pal oils from freeing the Doom Mud. We were getting uh, the Ice Crystals. We got some more pal fluid from freezing a Fuwak, and I was so excited about getting it. Oh god, I've hit the jackpot. I'm rich. I'm so rich. And as you can see, I just went back to buying more powers. This was pretty much the process that was repeated, so I'm not going to show me buying any more powers anymore, because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of powers that I bought. Okay, hold on. I might actually be able to make some cement. I just realized we need... We get 10 cement per... Well, power fluid. So let's make that. That'll give us 50 cement, which means we should be able to make a couple of things. I didn't realize we might actually be able to make a bit of something, something with this cement. I didn't realize that. That's actually pretty good news for us, I reckon. Now, after figuring out I could make cement, I then went ahead and built a high quality hot spring because I didn't actually need, well, I needed a little bit of power fluid for cement, but I could build that for our guys. I also went ahead and built a production line as well so that we could get some guns going. And then we finally upgraded our base. Hallelujah. All I need to do now was build an improved furnace. But before that, I had to hatch a bunch of these eggs. So I got the furnace down, got some of the ingots, and then I actually returned to hatch the eggs. Nothing really exciting in there, unfortunately. But I did travel out to the snowy area to try and hunt down some of these uh, pal genetic researchers. They were a couple of levels above us, and obviously we suffered for that because we died on more than one occasion trying to kill these guys. So I did return back to the volcano area to kill the fire dudes in there. Oh, but that was a whole other issue. We just kept dying to the heat. I tried to get my body back. It was just a, a constant battle of trying to battle the heat, making it back to my body in time, getting the resources and just trying to get closer to the fast travel point. Thankfully, I did manage to return there and get all my stuff back. Went back to base and we got raided by a bunch of humans. I figured, why not? Brothers of the Eternal Pyre, easy XP. Thankfully, Fanglope was up to the task of absolutely annihilating these suckers. And we got a bunch of XP from it in the process as well. After the raid, I then returned back to the volcano area. Once again, killing some more brothers of the Eternal Pyre. As well as getting a huge dragon egg as well. And then I went down into Blaze Armit's cave because I knew we had a chest down here that we could unlock with a key. And I was hoping to get some decent schematics. I did get an assault rifle schematic. It wasn't the one I was after, but I would take it. So I then continued killing more of these brothers of the Eternal Pyre enemies. Once again, they were decent XP. Obviously, we could go kill the genetic guys, but they were just a little bit too strong for me to reliably kill. So I just kind of went ahead and farmed up all of these guys because I was getting ready to try and fight Orserk and his trainer. I can't remember his name. Uh, but that's why we had Anubis 4 and Doomud and everything because, yeah, we were just trying to level them up in order to go ahead and fight uh, Orserk. Thankfully, the PAL genetic researchers did give a crap ton of experience when I did manage to kill them. So I kind of just tried to cycle through and did what I could to kill them. And it kind of worked. I then returned back to base, sold a bunch of nails and any extra gear, and bought some more pals. Oh. So close. I'm pretty sure Work Slave is not good. Yeah, it gives us negative 30 attacks. So it counters, these counter each other. How annoying. God damn it. We got the 50% attack, 129. And we got Swift on one. We're getting all the freaking random ass bloody things. Alright, I think I'm going to switch them out. I think I'm going to go for an uh, Azerobe farm because we need one for... We're going to need water types to defeat uh, to defeat the enemy for Lyra. So Marcus, I think his name is, to defeat Marcus. So I think that's what we'll get going next. Azerobe is our best bet. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick our Ferocious and Musclehead Van Wyrm. And we're going to put him with our Eliza B. So I'm hoping we can get a Ferocious Musclehead Azerobe. We'll just have to wait and see though, like obviously, wait, never mind, that's a female, I can't use Eliza B, so we might have to use a war sect. 
All right, so let's crank these eggs out. I'm hoping we get some good Azure robes out of it, because, yeah, she's going to be our main... We'll probably just have to take an entire team of Azure robes, to be honest, because we don't really have any other... Well, we got Pen King. So I'm thinking I'm just going to make two handguns and just use those, and then we can use the bullets and interchange between them so that we don't run out of durability on them. Because obviously that's going to be significantly stronger than using uh, the musket and stuff like that, because we'll just be able to rapid fire sort of thing. All right, cool. So, yeah, now it's just kind of a waiting game. I don't want to head out and fight stuff because we don't have Warsect with us. Um, so, yeah, we just kind of wait. Maybe What if spears have I got? Maybe I'll go see if we can catch a Black Marketeer. We'll try our luck again. Should I try and fight him? I reckon we can try and fight him, probably. We'll give it a shot. I don't, she didn't even get the freaking attack off. Oh, that knocked him around. Oh god. Anubis, I choose you. <laughs> what are you aiming at, big dude? We do no damage to him whatsoever. These guys have a hell of a lot of health, my god. Well, that didn't work out well for me. So after failing to defeat the Black Marketeer, I returned back to base to hatch some more eggs up. You guys know the process. Trying to get more Phalerises. Once I, I think I was going to try and breed it into something else. We also got a bunch more of the large damp eggs, which would eventually turn into as. I then returned back to the small shelter to try and capture some of the merchants out here. These guys were level 30, so they're actually a lot harder than some of the other merchants we had come across so far. But... I mean, we didn't have any luck. I was just shocked at the dude eating his cake on the table while a gunfight was going on. Hatched some more eggs and I managed to get Jormantide Ignis as well, which is really good. He was a level 4 kindling, so he would be really good for making our cakes and stuff like that, which I was really happy about. His passive skills weren't really too good. He did have Brave, so he did have a bit of extra attack, but we didn't really need him for anything, really. Alright, so we're going to breed Warsect and Relaxosaurus now in hopes that we can get a Jormantide, the normal variant. Because once again, that's another aquatic team that we can take with us to try and defeat Marcus and Phileris. So we can sort of... Whoop, oh, that's the wrong thing. There we go. So we should be able to swap in between them. We could take Larxosaurus, but this one's not really that great. I'm hoping we get decent uh, passive skills on the Jormantide. Because, I mean, right now we don't have very good passive skills. But that's... This is our only way that we could make Jormantide at the moment. So I'm going to enhance him a little bit. 573. What are we sitting at now? 589. We could also kill some of his friends. And uh, enhance him as well again. But I think for now we'll just use the souls. Because I can refund these. Yeah, 12,000. Uh, Doomud can stay... F we're not going to use Doomud. Enhance him, I don't think. And then what we'll do is we'll also enhance Warsec once we're done breeding. Hopefully that'll be good enough to get us through what we need to do. Fingers crossed. I still want to try and buy dig toys though. I just wish this info on the side would work. So I then spent some time obviously hatching and incubating eggs. We got a terrible Azure with bottomless stomach and workaholic, which is definitely going to get absorbed into another one. We finally got a huge dragon egg as well, and this should hopefully be our Yorman Tide as well that we would use. I then needed to destroy our hot spring that had caused me so much grief and cost me my sanity. Because I needed to make some more cement so I could make the production line and get that up and running. So I destroyed it and got my 10 plow fluids back in stock. And then I made some more cement up. I then returned to hatching my eggs. And I was really after an Azure with decent passive skills. Because we hadn't had one yet. And this was one of the reasons why I was breeding them so much. Speaking of, Musclehead and Ferocious. That will do. That has me absolutely freaking stoked. Oh god, that was perfect timing. That was perfect timing. Alrighty, here we go, guys. It's time to take on Osirk. I can't remember the other dude's name. Where the hell's the entrance? Is that it there? Alright, so game plan is, I think we're going to try and use Anubis and Warsect to do most of our damage. Uh, we've got a couple of different weapons in case we run out of ammo. We've got single shot rifle. We've got the musket. We've got the handguns. That actually does more damage than the musket. I wonder how quick it reloads. But nonetheless, here we go. Oh, I feel nervous. Uh, let's get in here and give it a shot. We're only level 35. I'm pretty sure that's what the level says when you actually go to fight him as well. I'm just going to cry and pokeball him up there. We're going to try and... Oh, shit. 
I also can't make a stronger shield for myself because I've got no ancient, ancient civilization parts. So I've got to try and do my best here to survive as best as I can. But I'm super nervous about it. Oh my god! That did a lot of fucking damage. We are in trouble here. That's why I put all my points into healthful. Alright, Anubis is doing alright. It's a good thing that our attacks also get the earth element from Anubis. I'm surprised we lost our health so quickly though, to be honest. It really sucks. That's a water type move, so wait. Oh my god, that just slung shot over to us. I don't think we're going to beat this guy. I don't know what the hell's going on with the Anubis. Has he just got no moves? Alright, we're not going to make this. There's no way. We've got five and a half minutes left. He's not even halfway health. We're just going to have to die, like... It's unfortunate, but it's kind of... It's, it's, it's annoying that they say, like, level 35 and all that sort of shit when... So, yeah. I mean, there's no way we pull this off. With that time limit. I then spent some time traveling around to a bunch of different traders, buying more powers to get more levels, creating more nails. The process repeated itself, mining more ore, killing more Brothers of the Eternal Pyre, as well as the PAL genetic researchers, literally anything that would give me XP, I was spending my time doing it right now, because that was what was mainly holding us back. Alright, here we go. 816 nails, I think that's the most amount of- oh my god, 130 grand, don't mind if I do. God damn, that's a lot of money. Our cake production is going pretty good. We got pancakes being made up over here as well for our pals because we're kind of getting through our berries and we haven't really produced anything better for them. Our eggs are looking pretty dang good as well. We've got uh, this one that we just found out there. What we're currently trying to breed is Phileris so that we can get the Ferocious and Musclehead into an Anubis. I don't have a female Phileris to breed with anyone. And there is our beautiful Yormantide. Perfect. So these guys are going to try and hopefully help us defeat... Uh, Marcus? Yeah, it's Marcus, because he's got Phileris. So I'm hoping from these huge scorching eggs, we do get a female Phileris with Ferocious and Musclehead. With that, we can then try and breed for an Anubis that'll get Ferocious and Musclehead to help us defeat uh, the uh, Ozzurk guy. I can't remember the, the main dude's name. I then found this weird pillar landing area, which I thought I could make it to because there were some chests up there, but uh, yeah, that wasn't meant to be anyway. I then returned back to the small settlement to try and capture some more of these merchants as capturing the power merchant would speed up how much XP I get. Thankfully, I did capture him. Now I could actually buy the powers super quickly and we could refresh his shop by just chucking him in our box and bringing him back out. It would save us a lot of time. Also made up some more armor, sold some more nails, you know, the standard stuff that we've been doing to stay afloat of everything. Hatched some more eggs, getting a cryolinks, a bunch of... Uh, a bunch more Phileruses as well, because we were going to get a ton of those. I bought some more Fire-type powers, including the Reptoro with a burly body, so we could hopefully use him on Urserk. I built another breeding farm, so we could get more eggs produced and just get a bunch more Azurobes going, because she was going to, what we were going to use to kill Marcus and Phileris. I then went back out into the mountain, getting sources of XP from killing the... Uh, Brothers of the Eternal Pyre. Once I hit level 40, I then went out and started fighting the PAL genetic research guys because obviously they're going to provide even more XP. However, these guys were still really strong because I didn't have the ability to upgrade my shield. We were stuck using the mega shield, which is like the second shield you get. I was really struggling. Like, I, I didn't have a way to upgrade that because we hadn't been fighting any of the PAL. So it was, we were literally unable to end. Yeah, thankfully I still was able to kill a bunch of them. I hatched a bunch of uh, huge rocky eggs, which were Anubis, because I wanted to buff up our fighting Anubis so that we could hopefully kill Orsirk. It was all going down. It was all going down. So the Anubis that we were using had Ferocious as well as Hooligan and Power of Gaia. So it did have quite a lot of extra attack on itself compared to our standard Anubises. Plus, considering our normal Anubises had uh, Work Slave, this guy was kind of massive compared to them, which was really good. So our team heading forward to try and kill Orsirk was going to consist of Warsect, Fanglope, uh, our level 37 Anubis with the two really strong passives, 
a level 37 Raptor Row, as well as another Anubis just in case. We also bring Fanglope along with us just as a mount to have and just in case anything goes wrong. I mean, it wasn't strong, but it was all we had really and it wasn't worth switching out for another Earth type. So I reset the initial Anubis that we had been using and started buffing up the level 37 Anubis and it had already had more attack and defense than our level 40 Anubis, which was great. I also went ahead and sold a bunch more nails so that I could start purchasing some ammunition as well so I could use this in the boss fights as I did have the single shot rifle uh, and a bunch of handguns so I needed the ammo obviously to try and help kill the boss. Alright, here we go. So far I'd say we're doing a lot better than last time. Oh man, we are cutting it super close, I can tell you that much. This is going to be down to the bloody wire. I reckon. Oh man, this is going to be so close. Two minutes to do 20,000 damage. I really hope we pull this off. I honestly don't think I've got it in me to try and do this again. Oh, you got knocked out by the freaking rain, are you kidding me? I don't know how I got set on fire. That attack didn't even connect. Oh no, that attack missed just completely. Oh, you dickhead. Come on, come on. Yes, nice. Alright, we should be able to get him. If we can get off another attack or two, we should be okay. And he just died. Anubis, you can do something, mate. Go on, get in there. Oh my god, this is nail biting. Oh, come on, I can't keep missing these shots. Finish him? Bro, are you kidding me? Come on, Warsec, you gotta finish this, mate. 30 seconds. Oh, let's go! Oh, that was way too close for comfort. Oh my god. Oh, my heart. Oh, I'm going to have freaking palpitations. We got him. We did it. Thank God for that. Let's get out of here. Oh, man, I'm so happy that we killed him. Now we just have to do it all again with the fire type one. And we are very far off getting that done. Oh, man. After killing the Orsirk, however, we got a really good Jormantide with Musclehead and Ferocious on it as well. So he had an extra 50% attack due to those passive traits, which was absolutely massive. And he was going to be our king when it came to defeating Marcus and Phileris. All we had to do was get him leveled up and buffed up. The next few days were obviously spent killing more of the PAL genetic researchers. Our Fangloper had hit 42 and unlocked the, uh, I think it's called the Icicle Shard attack. And pretty much that fires a massive Icicle Shard and does a ton of area of effect damage. And we were pretty much just using that to almost one-shot the PAL genetic researchers because it does hit twice. Uh, and then in some cases, we were even riding Fanglope using it and then actually getting off Fanglope and she would use it again, which is really effective. So I did this inside of an ice cape in this area because obviously you can get these guys to respawn. So we were getting a ton of XP from killing these PAL genetic researchers with, Pang, uh, with Fanglope's Icicle skill attack. We were just doing so much damage and it was great. And this was literally what we spent the next few days doing. Just trying to get as much XP as possible. So after getting those levels, I returned back to base and started preparing our aquatic tames by condensing our Azure robes and condensing our Jormantides to make them even stronger for Marcus and for Lyris. Now, thankfully, I did have four of the Ormantides and the Azure Robes, but I was going to need 16 for the next lot, and that's a lot of guys. So, before I could do that, I had to sell some more nails, buy some more ammunition, buy some more pals so I could get that XP, but I mainly spent it on ammunition as I was trying to make myself one of the shotguns. I was also trying to hit level 46 as well so that I could make it the PAL metal armor. I bought some high quality PAL oil as well so I could make some polymer and craft myself up the shotgun that I so desired. 
I also made a bunch of salads for my pals at the base so that would increase their work speed for me so we could hopefully get more cake production going and get more eggs coming out so that we could make our Yormantides and Azurobes stronger. Because my plan was to use the Yormantides and the Azurobes as well for Shadowbeak, the final boss as well, because they're both dragon types as well, that would be super effective against the Shadowbeak. I was then finally ready to make myself up my shotgun. It was only the basic one, but I mean, that would deal more damage than my single shot rifle and my handguns. I then had to leg it to try and get to uh, the uh, fire tower where Marcus and Phileris was. I didn't have a flyer, so I did take my time, but I did manage to get there. And then I condensed down 16 Yormantides into our one Yormantide to make it super strong. Now, it did get quite a bit of a buff from doing this, which I was pretty happy about. And then it was Azurobe's turn as well. So we were looking at dealing a lot of damage. That Hydro Laser move as well was going to be essential to defeating Phileris. So I wanted to get them some more levels before heading out, so we managed to kill Lily and Lyleen, giving everyone a level up, which was great. And then we reset the Fox Sparks souls, and anyone else really that I didn't need the souls in, so Warsec for example as well, we reset him. And I put all of the souls into the Azurobe and the Yormantide. Because I figured we're not going to really need our Earth Dudes anymore, we had killed Ozzurk, so I figured we could go ahead and do it. I managed to hit level 46 so I could now go ahead and make the pal metal armor in the helm. However, it dawned on me that I actually couldn't make it because I needed the electric furnace to do so. Not realizing that I was going to need a bunch more of resources that I couldn't really get my hands on, it made things a little bit more difficult. Now, because I needed that, I needed to make circuit boards. I then also needed the production line number two, which was a bunch of resources and my time was running out. I didn't have very many days left and I needed to try and complete this 100 day series with a win, right? I needed to defeat Marcus and Phileris and we still hadn't even gotten to Gojo yet. So I needed to just do what I could. So instead I learned the cold resistant metal armor and the metal, the heat metal resistant armor and I made that up. It wasn't going to be as strong as the PAL metal armor, but at least it would be better than what I was currently wearing. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. That was a solid attack. Just gonna cycle between the Azurobes so we can get off the Hydro Lasers and then I'll probably cycle back to Yormantite. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Halfway mark and we're under halfway health. So I'll take it. Come on, Yormantide, get the attack off. Come on, quick. Yes. Oh shit. Come on, come on, we can't die here. I'm so close to dying. Let's go! Marcus and Phileris eliminated. Oh man, that makes me so happy. Whew! Alright. Uh, honestly, that went much better than I expected. We still had a couple of minutes left before, like, we had lost so i'm pretty happy about that next boss gojo wannabe i then went ahead and started condensing some of our azure robes down into the singular azure robe we had it required 16 of them now i also wanted to make the saddle for azure robe as it would allow us to ride it and cause our attacks to deal extra water damage however i think we needed power fluids for azure robe saddle so i didn't even make it a saddle which was unfortunate so we just had to deal with what we had all right, here we go. Can we make it? I'm hoping we can. I'm thinking we should be able to just glide from the Phileris. Yeah, let's go. Woo. All right, that was much easier than using Fanglobe to scale the goddamn mountain. All right, guys, we're going to go in and we're going to see if we can beat him. We've got some omelets for our guys. So we're going to feed Yormantide, Azurobe, and Azurobe. And that's going to give them an extra 10% attack. So I'm thinking we should... Hopefully, come close to beating this guy. 
I'm hoping anyway. I don't really know if we're going to be able to. We're going to give it our best shot. It's time to try and face down Victor. It's our last day. We're going to do our best here to try and beat him. Oh, I hate this ball attack. I also don't have the best shield. Oh my god, poor Yorman type just got absolutely demolished. Yorman type. Oh, as if that hits him! Oh god, we aren't even going to survive. Actually, that's what I did bring. No, did I? I didn't think I. I don't think I brought them with me. I did bring the grenades. I brought incendiary, incendiary grenades with me. So that we could set him on fire. Because I feel like setting him on fire is probably a good call. Just for like extra damage. Oh man, poor Yormantide's taken a massive beating. I don't think we're going to beat Victor and Shadowbeak. I don't think we're going to deal enough damage. We've done 40k damage in 4 minutes. It's like we have to replicate that another 5 times. I don't think we'll be able to beat him. We've reached this stage again. The stage of us not being able to beat him. Oh, and we died. Just to top it off. Oh, that's unfortunate. I don't think there's really much we can do, to be honest. So since we can't defeat Victor and Shadowbeak, what we're going to do instead is I think we'll just capture them. It's not a pal. It's Victor and Shadowbeak. So, uh, suck on them apples, Victor and Shadowbeak. What do you reckon about them? We finally beat him. I'll take it. Now we're just stuck in here, so let's respawn. Well, if you can't beat them, just subject them to a life of slavery. That is what you get, Victor, for being a pain in the ass. So guys, that is going to wrap up this 100 days series. Let me know what you thought of it down below. Let me know any other challenges you might have for another 100 day series. But other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one.